books, prepare your hearts. It is time to listen to the word of God. And with all humility, I welcome our elder, Emmanuel Owusu, to bring us the word of God. Shall we please do better than that? I know we can do better. Amen. We thank God for another day in his presence, and I thank him for your life. David said, it is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice, and I will be glad in it. It is always a joy to be in the presence of the Lord. And I'm praying this morning, even as we come together, seeking the face of our God, he will show up. Amen. I bring you greetings from Norcross, and then greetings from Pastor. Um, he called me that I needed to stand in today, so I'm here, and I know the Lord will speak to us. Shall we bow down our heads? Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, sweet spirit, spirit, I pray. We pray that you will speak to our hearts, you will touch our lives, you will transform us, and you will take us to the other level. We humble our hearts before you. Have your way. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This morning is the climax of the program that we have had for the whole week. And in case you were not able to attend any of them, I will tell you, you missed a lot. And that is not a lie. Uh, you missed a lot. There is no way going back to it. Uh, what I would advise is you may look for them maybe on YouTube or somewhere, and you can refresh yourself with them. We cannot go back because it was condensed and concentrated. I pray that this morning, at least, you will hear something. And before you leave here, you will be a blessing. The main theme for the week program is open the heavens for us, O oh Lord, to possess the nations. By the way, you know that this whole year, anything we talk about to possess the nations is part of it. Uh, so even when you are working, somebody calls you, remember, possess the nations. <laughs> so the key here is that we want God to open the heavens for us. We want God to open the heavens for us. And it has been cut short in a way that open heavens convention. Open heavens convention. 
So all that we are seeking is for God to look on us again. And when God smiles on you, you are fine. When he smiles on you, he doesn't need to talk. In fact, I think last week I was reading a scripture that says that God sings about us. I say, oh, God too sings. It's in your Bible. Go and look at it. If God is singing about you, you know things that bring singing, right? That means he delights in you, and that is good news. So if God were to open the heavens to look on us, that should be enough. And I believe there will be more to it. I want to read the main scriptures that we have. I am not sure I can talk about all of them, but maybe a summary of it. You read from Luke chapter 3, verse 21 and 22. All these will be from the New King James Version. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. Then I read from Isaiah 64 verse 1 to 4. Oh, that you would rend the heavens, that you would come down, that the mountains might shake at your presence as fire burns brushwood, as fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversary, that the nations may tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things for which we did not look, you came down, the mountains shook at your presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God besides you, who acts for the one who waits for him. I want you to take special note of the verse 4. I like it. For since the beginning of the world, men, of course, and women, gender balance, right? Men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God besides you who acts for the one who waits for him. In other words, it is not done. There is no other God who can act on behalf of those who wait. And you see, we are praying for the day that these things will be taken off. It's hard when you are preaching with this. You try to manage, but it tries to manage you. There are many attempts from different quarters and different circles as to how other entities want to help. But this is a biblical testimony that men's ears, their eyes, have not seen any other God who acts on behalf of those who wait on him. That means they may try, but they, we can say they are counterfeit and fake. But there is a God who acts on behalf. You see, when we are acting on behalf, that means you put the person aside and you take it upon yourself to do it. So the things that weigh you so much down, one time I was asking somebody, you see, sometimes we behave like we are so bad in, the life is so difficult, we are so challenged. And I asked somebody that, you just list for me your, all your prayer topics. You will see at most, you may go to number five. One, two, what again? Then you don't remember. So the question is, what is it that you are so disturbed in life? You couldn't even get to number ten. You are behaving as if all you are carrying the world. But that is not actually the case. No wonder the Bible said that we should cast all our burdens upon him. For he cares. This morning I pray that the Lord will touch your heart. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1. Now it came to pass in the 13th year, in the fourth month, on the fifth 
day of the month. As I was among the captives by the river Cheba, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. Amen. This is Ezekiel speaking. He says that as I was among the captives, he wasn't looking at the captives, but he was part of the captives, and yet he saw the heavens open. This morning, it doesn't matter your location. It doesn't matter how people have pegged you. It doesn't matter where you find yourself to be. The heavens can open for you. Amen. Okay. I want to just, for those of you who have come through the week, the, these were the topics. I won't go back to them, but just to let you know how it came about. Operating under open heavens to possess the nation. That was the topic for Monday. And then on Tuesday, it was unlocking the heavens with importunate fasting. Wednesday was unction to function under open heaven. Then the Thursday, it was rent the heavens for us to experience your awesome deeds. Friday, he says, send us the latter and former rains. That topic sounds interesting to me because we normally say latter and former rain. You expect us to say former and latter rain. I was looking at it and I said, well, if you get the latter rain first and the former, that means it is actually preparing and projecting you. So you are harvesting not only that, but getting a seed to launch into the next phase. Hallelujah. And then today, we are talking about open the heavens for us, O oh Lord. Okay. When we talk about heavens, sometimes you hear the word heaven, other times you hear heavens. Uh -huh. um, the Hebrew people wanted to make a distinction, and they couldn't do it so well. So what they did was, they would call one first heaven, second heaven, and then third heaven. There are only three anyway. Don't add more. So... When you hear it like this, you can be confused at which one is which. It's simple. The first heaven is the atmosphere that we all see. And I would say that is the physical one that we all see. And for that one, you will see the birds flying over there. We see uh, whatever, airplanes will fly over there. Maybe the sun and the moon. All those things are there. But we also have the second heaven. The second heaven is, for those of you who never knew it, the second heaven is where the devil's headquarters is. So if you have been crying as if the devil is staying in your house, no. He is somewhere different. He is in the second heavens. In fact, I call him next door neighbor. And do you know the reason why I call him that? When he rebelled, he was cast out from heaven. He didn't go far. He only came to the second heaven. And if you have ever lived in a place like maybe a story building and some people, apartments, you are top and then some people are down and you have children, you understand what I'm trying to say. If your children are always jumping, disturbing those down, they may call police for you, right? Because it's like, why are you disturbing me? More so when they don't have a, a children. So this guy who is in the second heaven, when he's hearing of things being planned about us, things going on in heaven concerning us, he gets worried. So next door neighbor will want to bounce on us and will want to create confusion for us. If you want to understand this well, you can read from Revelation and you will see when the Bible says that I saw the devil cast out. And the Bible says that woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. Sometimes there's a misinterpretation of that. We think that is when he sinned and he was cast out. Because when he sinned, there was no human being on the earth. So how can they say woe unto the inhabitants? If you continue to read the text, you understand when he says that, for he knows that his time is short. Are you with me? So there is coming a time that in the second heavens, in that apartment he has been rented, he is going to be cast out when his time, I like that word, evicted. So he himself is not secured, right? So he will be cast out, and that time he knows that hell is close. 
And that is when he's going to bounce on human beings. When you talk about the end time things, great tribulation, that is where he's going to come. So for the now, we want to know that he is in the second heaven. And the Bible said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual hosts of wickedness. In chief, forgive me to put it this way. In chief, they have something that they say, and that explains it. When people, children get conversion, in my language, they will say, Osro Akano. Osro is like the heavens. Akano means touch. So when they say the heavens have touched them, literally, that is connoting the idea that there is a demonic force that is bringing the disease. Are you getting it? Because you may be holding a child before you realize the eyes are just all white and it's like, so you know something is going on wrong. That is, that is trying to paint a picture as to certain demonic activities that go on around us. And the Bible says that we wrestle not again. If you have watched wrestling before, that is not boxing. Boxing, you see that you go, I come, right? Wrestling, if I get your hand and I'm twisting, the referee will just be looking on whilst I keep twisting. And whilst you turn to say, why are you twisting? And I get your leg, both come together. There are no rules like that. So when the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, what that means is that the least chance the devil gets. You understand? So he says we shouldn't give the devil a foothold. If it is just one foothold, when he gets in, he will just make it like that. To make it big, he will expand it. And he will cause great havoc. But we are still mortals. We are still human beings. So how do we face this enemy? That is why we want to project into the other heavens. And that is where God is seated. So in the third heavens, that is why the Apostle Paul said that, I know a man, whether in the body or he was caught up. In the third heavens. And he said something that is interesting. He said that he heard things that was unlawful for men to say. Then I said, what is going on that they don't want us to hear? You understand? That's why one day we want to go there. So we have these different stages. Okay. Another picture for you to understand the second heavens is when Daniel, I may come to that. When Daniel was praying, the Bible says that the first day he started praying, an answer was released. And then the prince of Persia stood in the way. So you want to ask yourself, if God's angel is coming, how come that the devil can withstand? And this is where sometimes we Christians, we deceive ourselves. We think that, I think in the book of Job, he said, when the sons of God gathered, Satan went there, right? Where did they gather? Can somebody tell me? I didn't come to test you. But the point is that the sons of God has gathered. If you are talking about the sons of God, whether angels or whatever, it's assumed that they are gathered in the presence of a holy God because there God was asking the devil questions, right? If you ask my opinion, I'll say that maybe he went to heaven. So if the devil can go to heaven and you are painting him black as if that he, he is, I don't know if you are understanding my point. If in heaven, he goes there. He was only uh, cast out, evicted, and then coming low. But he visits from time to time. <laughs> so you shouldn't be surprised if you come to church and he's here, right? So the point I'm making is that he doesn't... Some of you go and sleep and then you open your Bible, put it at your head, and you feel you are comfortable. What about your leg? <laughs> you see, you need to understand that there should be something in you that expels. And that is how you will be able to face that enemy. So talking about angels, they were all in the same category. God created them angels. Only that a group decided to do bad things with what they have. So if they are all um, cohorts, co-equals, they may have the same power. That is what it means. Only that one has chosen, remember their end has not come yet. So there is no judgment. So one has chosen to do bad and one has chosen to do good. So when the answer was released, and, and the, the principalities are territorial spirits. So they control, a principality may control a whole like America. 
So those are powerful. <laughs> I remember back at school when I was in college, we had one of our leaders. He used to like prayer. He was the one they would say, oh, Joshua's. And the one time he was leading prayer, and he said, I'm blessed of God. I'm anointed. I am this. And when he says it, then we all respond. And then he said, I'm a principality. And everybody's mind. Then everybody was quiet. You see, the notion is that principality is linked with demons. But he's talking about a guru who operates in a wider scope. He has a wide territory. That is all he's trying to say. So these spirits are there, and they are powerful. Remember, they are spirit beings. You can't contend with them. So God needed to dispatch another angel to come and clear the way. He will come and touch on that. So just a quick look at the heavens. When we say he should open the heavens, I said, I said before that sometimes we say heaven, another time we say heavens. When we say he should open the heavens, we are talking about going through all of them, that there cannot be any restriction. You know, the beautiful thing about this is that when Jesus died, Jesus wasn't doing things for fun. He knew what he was doing. He could resurrect, tell the disciples, go and sleep tomorrow. Me, I have already told you I'm going. And then you come, he's not there. Isn't that also farewell? You see? Or he said, okay, I'm going to this town. When I go there, leave me there and then come and continue the work. I'm gone. How is it that when they were walking with him, the Bible says that they saw him going up. The cloud was receiving him. I love that picture so much. And whilst they looked, he was still going. In other words, I have won the victory. I am now going home. Demons and principality, stop me and let us see. So he penetrated unto his heavens. Nobody could stop him. And if Jesus has penetrated and has given me his victory, then when I pray, direct line. So this morning, when we're talking about open heavens, you need to understand the concept of it. This is something Christians make noise. Just because others are doing it, we also do it. You need to understand what you are talking about. Amen. Let's go into scripture. And I want to finish early. I am learning not to promise like that, but it still dawns on me as you say I want to finish early. I want to quickly draw our attention to something, the text that we read from Luke. You see that in the synopsis, or let's say in the Gospels, sometimes you read something in one Gospel, and you can read it in may, maybe two or three of the rest, somehow to confirm or like get another picture. When you read the account, we have it in Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 to 17. Over there, it is talking about Jesus being baptized. Jesus being baptized. And he says that John was the one, John the Baptist, he was the one who was baptizing. When Jesus was going to him, then John started protesting. Remember, John was a forerunner, so he knew Jesus well. When Jesus was going, you are coming to me, I rather need to come to you so that I'll be baptized. And then Jesus said, no, 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 no. We, we have to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, he humbled himself so much that he will be baptized. In fact, baptism literally means that you are dying to your sin and are resurrecting unto life or unto righteousness. What was Jesus' sin? None. So why should he go through? He said, let's fulfill all righteousness. If I do, if I do, then everybody else has to do. That is not the end of the story. When John agreed and baptized, he said that he saw the heavens open. And then there was um, the dove who came on him. I don't want to bore you with the details of that. So we see that in Jesus' baptism, something different happened. You come to Mark, the book of Mark, and that one you can also get it from Mark chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. Mark 1, 9 to 11. He's talking about the same thing, but he only talks about Jesus when he was being baptized, and then the heavens opened, and the dove came. 
I'm jumping. If you go to John chapter 1, verse 29 and 34, remember this John is different from the one who is called the Baptist. So the one who was baptizing is different from the one who wrote this. So that was his testimony. He also talks about the spirit descending, John 1, 29 to 34. And then he also talks about Jesus being the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. So he adds something else. Okay. When you come to the account of Luke, it's different. I want to read it again. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also, somebody say also. So that tells you that something is going on. We were not expecting this man. But he also came. And while he prayed, the heaven opened. Are you seeing the addition here? The others don't tell us that Jesus was praying. But here, and of course, each of the, the writers had a different way of writing. Um, Ma Matthew was the type who was portraying Jesus as a king. So there are certain things he may not concern himself with. Mark was also painting a picture to the Romans or the Gentiles so that they would know Jesus as the servant master sort of thing. But Luke is a physician, so he is a, he's a doctor, medical doctor. And Luke, Luke knows who a human being is. So when he talks about a story, he gives more details. And now he's telling us actually what was going on that activated the opening of the heavens. So he tells us that Jesus was actually praying. So you see that prayer is the connection. When you are praying, uh, I would say pray in season and pray out of season. You understand? All you need to do is to just pray. I like one name about Jesus. One of his names is Amen. And when we say Amen, that means let it be. So even when you pray, he's the one who will package it and send it to God and will amen it, right? So even <laughs> if your prayer is zigzagging, just don't worry. One of my friends told me that one time he was praying, he was going to sleep, he was very sleepy, and he felt like he, should, he still has to pray before he sleep. So whilst pray, praying, he was dozing off and said, so God, now that I'm dying, then quickly... He come back to you. Sometimes when you are sleeping, don't pray. <laughs> you can say horrible things. <laughs> but the point I'm making there, regardless, there is somebody whose name is Amen. And he will put a stamp on the prayer. Isn't that beautiful? So all you need is to present to him. He will package it well and send to the Father. Hallelujah. So now we see that Jesus was praying, and then the heavens opened. I like to see that picture. When we say heavens have opened. And this is not like heaven opened spiritually, so that it's like, let's try and open our eyes to see. No, this one, the Bible says that they saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. This is not vision. And it came and rested on Jesus. So you, need, you, you now know that God is giving a physical testimony about his son. He says, this is my beloved son. I should understand that while Jesus was walking around, people will know he is God's beloved son, right? But now God himself from heaven is speaking that this is my beloved son. Hear him. Amen. So, this week that we are looking forward to receiving from God, when we are looking forward to getting something from God, we want God to speak. And we want him to speak concerning our lives. Amen. There are some few things that I want us to touch on, and then some of them have been said already, but I want to touch on them and then we will close. When we talk about the open heavens, the kind of experiences that can go with it, this is not all, but just trying to whet your appetite to know that if you can only get to the point that the heavens are open for you, you will be fine. Amen. I don't know what you are going through, and I don't know what you will be going through, but what I know is that there is an answer for the now, 
and the future. And that is coming from the open heavens. Amen. Last time we heard about David and Goliath. You see, David was a boy. In fact, we call him a shepherd boy. He was on the wilderness. But this man, this boy, had, had had an encounter with God. And then even while on the wilderness, when animals attack his sheep, he will go after them. You don't mess up with David, right? So on the field, he had gained some muscles. As if that is not enough. He came, I'm cutting some of these stories short. He came to visit his brothers. And he was supposed to go and see how they were doing. Then when he got there, there was this man that they called Goliath. You see, there may be certain Goliaths in your life that sometimes you decide not to talk about them. The Bible says that the Israelites had gone to hiding. And Goliath will wake up in the morning, hey, hey, Israel, bring me somebody that I'll fight. And if you look at the structure, me, my voice is soft. If you look at the structure, I can tell you the kind of voice he will be calling out to Israel. And I believe that when the Israelites hear that, when at all, in fact, sometimes you wish certain things die, right? So what about if he woke up in the morning and then he died? So that game close. At least we can face the other Philistines. But this man, so Israel had retreated. I don't know what is going on in your life. It could be your exams. In fact, some exams you can fail proper. You see, you don't have to pretend like joy in the Holy Ghost. I came to the Lord and then hallelujah, I got... You lie bad. You lie. There are certain courses you can fail and you yourself will praise yourself that I have failed. And still you have to pass it. So what do you do? Casting all your burdens upon him. For he cares. Hallelujah. Certain situations in life, you don't even want to talk about. In fact, when you are passing and people are conversing about it, you are fast. You just go. You don't want to hear it. Goliath. Goliath. But I pray that the heavens will be open for you. So David goes there. He sees that man. You see? This is how beautiful the whole thing becomes. When you are operating on another level, you, you, there is a song in Chi that says that great faith sees afar. And it doesn't care about the things around it. It laughs at the things that cannot be. And it only cries out, let it be. What he's trying to say is that when you have great faith, you don't care about things that go around you. It doesn't mean they are not. You go to the doctor and the doctor, in fact, some of your diseases, he doesn't even know. He now has to go and do research and find out the date that they will give it a name. A disease that doesn't have a name yet. And you think you can have medicine for it. As soon as they tell you, your heart melts and even you begin to die. You see how many times you have died coming from the hospital and the real death? So some of these things you hear and it's that, how is it going to be? Even my doctor is saying that he doesn't know. So what do I do? Goliath in life. But when David got to the scene, the Bible says that he <laughs> looked at him. <laughs> the only stranger in Jerusalem. And then, who, who is this man? You see? And he described him in another way. That who is this uncircumcised Philistine? This man is bold. You just got there. Why? The name of his God was being blasphemed. There is a scripture that says that he leads me in the path of righteousness. Why? For his name's sake. Do you know what that means? Put me aside. He needs to protect his name. For that reason, he must make sure I walk in the path of righteousness. So when you are talking about God, it is a different thing altogether. I told you from the beginning. It is not performance like I'm trying to learn from people so that when somebody is praying for 200 days, you also want to pray for 200. Do you actually need the 200 days? Copy, copy. So, uh, this sister said that, oh, uh, um, um, I don't want to talk too much. You see, 
she, she was failing the paper, and she gave an especially offering. So, so the Lord uh, made her pass. Me too, I'm going to give her. What is God telling you? Are you getting my point? It is not to, I'm not saying that if somebody gives offering, today we'll give an offering anyway. I'm not saying if somebody gives offering, don't do that. But what I'm saying is that, what is you? You need to understand where you are coming from. God speaks to us in different ways. So when you get to that point, then you can trust your God for yourself. So now David gets to the scene and says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And all of a sudden, he decides, I'm going to fight him. Saul himself said, hey, this man is, is a warrior from a very early stage. And you can't just do that. Whose son is this? He is in worried. David said, I'm going. And then he begins to put his profile there, resume, on the field, 2014, what was that? Bear coming, chasing my sheep, slaughtered. And then lion coming, split. You see? Saul himself looked at this and said, that, okay, this is a different one. And then he even tries to give him his armor. David wants to walk in there and say, that this one, they are heavier than me. And interestingly enough, a, sm- a young boy who cannot even carry the armor is going to fight that warrior. Goliath saw him on the field and said, ah, is right. Is this a mockery of us? You, I'm going to pick you like that, and I'll give you to the birds. You see, that's an insult. And then they are going to feast on you. And I believe David will be saying that if the birds are really hungry, then they need bigger body. You! him, they started chanting, you are coming to me in the ne- uh, with spears and javelin. You know that story again. But David tells him that today he's giving him the date. Today, I'm going to kill you and I'm going to cut off your head. I'm talking about Goliath. When you go, go and face your Goliath. You see, when David was talking plenty like this, he even didn't have a sword. Can you imagine? I'm going to kill you and cut off your head. We cut with a knife or a sword. He didn't have one. But he had already booked an appointment that it is your own sword that I will use to cut off your head. The long and the short of it is that David killed him like a bird. A sling. No discussion. It's like we are not going to waste time. And then as if we are now going to start the game, Goliath started going down. So Goliath too had the Goliath. Yeah. Open heavens. When heavens are for you, the Bible says, if God be for us. Do you really understand that scripture? You can sing about it. You can even pray, including it in your prayer. But do you really understand it? If God be for us, who? Turn to your brother yourself and tell him who? Who can be against us? The last time Joshua was going for war, he turned around, saw a man, and said, Hey, are you for us? Or for our... this man is bold. Though. They said, No, no, no. I have come like the lost army to defend. In other words, declare your stand before I take you down. This is Joshua speaking. So you want to face this Goliath. People might even advise you, as for this, just accept it. That is life. <laughs> we don't accept things like that. It has to come down. When the heavens open for you, it will come down. I wouldn't talk too much here. Let me give you a, 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 a scenario. Um, sometimes you might pray, and it's like the, the, the answers. God didn't say he won't answer. But the answers, whether they uh, have forgotten the recipient address or whatever, they don't come. Daniel started praying. The Bible said that the first day you went on your knees, having dispatch, the answer should go. Not knowing this angel is being delayed for no other reason. In fact, if you get to know more about it, that prayer that was delayed is detailed. It's, 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 in fact, that is one of the outstanding things about the Bible. When God revealed to Daniel things that will happen in the end times, which are happening in our day. So if the devil didn't want us to know, you should understand. It is not ordinary. There is more to it. So this 
Daniel man is waiting, but there was something going on. And then an angel was dispatched to go and clear the way. So the good news is that I was thinking about it and I said, that, well, Gabriel was a messenger. And angels are very obedient. So he was sent to deliver a message. He wasn't sent to go and fight. So it didn't mean he can't take him down. But he had a specific assignment. But Michael is the warrior. So when Michael saw what was going on and said, hey, this guy is still bluffing over there. And then he had to come quickly and then clear the way. So if he was able to clear the way, it tells you and I that no matter what is being a hindrance to our prayer, there is a possibility of clearing the way for us. One time back home, I was, I woke up, I think it was a Wednesday morning. I had sent in an application when I completed college, first degree. And then I had sent an application, waiting, waiting, nobody is calling. One time, I was just praying. I'm talking about how the heavens can open. I was praying in the morning, and then it just dawned on me that go to that company, like the organization. Go there today. Uh -uh. So I just finished everything, and then I started going. And before I went, I picked a copy of my Ghana Visa CV. I picked a copy of my CV, which was not signed, because I have already sent, but I had to go. I went to the office, and then, what do you PRO, is that a, a public officer, the, the, the public relations officer. I went to his office, and I greeted, I told him my story, and he said, we haven't received your application. Then I said, what? We haven't received your CV. Then I said, one is here, just take it. Wait. On his table, I signed it. I'm talking about when something is working on your behalf. Remember, I didn't go there on my own. I had a prompting, I should go. And then, interestingly, the man told me that tomorrow they are doing the interview. So come. Ah, the thing I'm waiting for, the interview is tomorrow. So what about if I have not come there? Besides that, I came with my resume, going to sign it on his table. Any serious person say, hey, you, my table, you, you see, some of those things can go against you. I gave him the resume, and then the worst part of it for him to tell me is that the positions are two. And already there are two women coming. If you are going for an interview with two women, um, that is a story for another time. But you don't know what that means. In fact, later, that was confirmed to me that the woman has pushed in something. You say, oh, that is a fact of life. In other words, I, I, I don't even need to waste my time there. The candidates have been selected already. Before the interview, and they are two. The, 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 the positions are two. They had received their details. Me, now I'm writing it. To, I said it. Somehow, this PRO man went outside and then said that I should still come. In fact, he made me to talk to the director, whatever, and then it's like tomorrow come. So the next day I went there, I saw the ladies, posh ladies, sitting there, confident. You could see, and it's like, when you see me, it's like, so... What are you coming to do here? But I also took a seat. While sitting there, this PR man came from the room where they were having the interview. And he said that I have talked to them to make the position straight. What? And those of you who know how complex and complicated that is, that was civil service in Ghana. And civil service, you dare not. It is highly bureaucratic. So for somebody to come out and tell me some of these things, it's like, where are we coming from? The long and the short of it is that I got a job. So the point here is that when God is acting on your behalf, it doesn't matter how you feel about it. Allow him. When the heavens open, he will smile on you. Amen. I wouldn't talk so much. Joseph. Joseph. Since the last time you heard me saying I wouldn't talk so much, right? I know. Joseph had the hand of God upon him. God had given him a dream. I don't know the dream you are carrying. You have put it on a shelf for a long time. Go and bring it. God had told him what he will be. He ends up being sold. If you have a dream and you are sold, then you know that that is not a good thing. Not only that, he ends up in a prison. But later, this same man, 
came out to the palace. Because heaven had already smiled on him, knowing what his future should be. Hallelujah. And one thing I want to point out, sometimes you hear these Bible stories and you are so excited. But, but uh, Joseph, when he went back to the palace, he forgave those who sold him. How is your forgiveness quotient? When you measure your own forgiveness, how is it? Even as we sit here, sometimes we sit at North and South Poles. You sit here, you sit there. Few minutes, you just turn around and see if they are still there. And then another time, you just blink. You see, sometimes you come to church, you are not even comfortable. You want us to close and go because you are not in talking terms with other people. How well have you forgiven? Some of these things don't come cheap. You need to go the extra mile. I don't have time to talk about it. Esther was a foreigner. For most of you who think you are in a foreign land and you are struggling, you don't necessarily have to struggle on the foreign land. There was a beauty contest for a queen. And somehow the king decided that the queen was bluffing, so I need a replacement, just like that. And then Esther was a foreigner. In fact, until when they had to be redeemed, they didn't know her identity. She goes to join them, and she wins. You see, there are certain contests you need to go for them. A promotion in your workplace, and then you feel like, oh, as for us, minority, well, go and apply for it. It could be about your spouse. Some of you men, you look at the women all around, 360 degrees. You go run, 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 run. You go and sleep, and it still go run, run, run. You have not been able to tell them anything. For Esther's story, I say, go for it. <laughs> Hallelujah. The thing that you know should belong to you, you have to master the courage and go for it. So even on a foreigner, when she had become a queen, that wasn't the end of the story. Now they plan to kill all of them. And then Mordecai comes. I'm talking about open heavens. People who have the backing of heaven. And then Mordecai said, Esther, go. Go and talk to the king. She said, we don't do things like that here. This is palace. And said, who knows such a time like this? Beloved, who knows it's such a time like this? That heavens will open for you and you will be the mouthpiece even for your family. Esther says, okay, 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 I'll go. If I perish, I perish. When God is on the scene, it's not an issue of perishing. So she goes there and then receives favor from the king. Long and short story. But that is not it. When this Haman man got to know what was going on, he was angry. He wanted to destroy all the people from Esther's lineage. And the whole thing turned around. Why? Because God was behind them. I don't know who is planning evil against you. Relax. You see, sometimes we fight unnecessary fight. Oh, she doesn't like me. Even when I was singing, did you see the way she was blinking there? Maybe some animal, some, some insect. <laughs> some insect fell on, on her eye. Some insect fell on her eye. And, and you don't know. You see, sometimes when you think people have something against you, you can project and be thinking about things that don't even exist. Wasting your time. But if you know God is on your side. This morning, I pray that you understand this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were put in a furnace. And for them, they said that God will come. He will show up. Even if he doesn't show up, I call it for better, for worse. Even if he doesn't, and I believe God was quiet in heaven, smiling, that these people don't know what they were dealing with. As soon as they were put in the furnace, God showed up. And then everything ceased. You might be in a furnace right now. A furnace that nobody knows. You feel heat. You feel like you are burning. Remember, if you are standing for God, the heavens will open. And not just God smiling on you, he will be there. He will be there. Bow down your head. This morning, I want you to just reflect on this. If you wouldn't mind, please be on your feet. We want to make strategic prayers. You want to pray like you mean what you are saying. 